Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, my name is Nick, and this is Nick's Fort, and today is To The Freaking Point Friday! And you know what that means, it means we're gonna get to the freaking point about how to use the warp stabilizer, and I'm actually gonna show you how it kind of works, and that's gonna help you use it better. If you're new here, please subscribe below if you're into it. I'm putting out videos and tutorials like this every week, so I'll be around if you're around. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we have our clip that we want to stabilize right here. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. And you can see it's a, a little wonky. It's a little handheld. So I'm going to just go over to the effects tab right here and go ahead and type in warp stabilizer. And then you can see that it shows up down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, click it over here, drag and drop, boom. And it immediately is gonna start analyzing the clip to stabilize it. You don't have to do anything, just kind of a really nice thing. You just drop it on there and boom, it starts working for you. And it's actually gonna stabilize the clip for you also immediately. You got your time up here. It shows you how far it is. And now it's stabilizing. And if we go ahead and hit play, we're gonna see the difference right away. And you probably notice it does a, like a little funky thing here on the side, right there. It kind of has this weird, weird funky vibe. It's gonna probably happen with a lot of your clips. The immediate result sometimes is going to work and sometimes it's just gonna have this like weird jello-y effect. First things first, I'm gonna go down to the framing area right here and I'm gonna go ahead and select stabilize only. And so now if I scrub through my footage, if you look on the edges, you're gonna see the frame is kind of dancing around, okay? So the stabilizer is actually moving your image around to stabilize the footage. So if I go over to framing and I drop this down to stabilize and crop, it's now gonna take that same motion of your frame, but now it's cropped it with this black box around it. So your footage is still the same size, but it's actually moving around behind here. And then if I go over here and I go to stabilize crop auto scale, now it's actually gonna zoom in on the footage so I'm no longer seeing this the weird black bars we had there. So that's kind of how it works through this process. And you can actually look over here where it says auto scale, it says 118% right there. That's how much it's actually zoomed into your footage, which it's super useful to know how much your footage is being zoomed in on when you're using this effect. So if it's going really, really far in, maybe 150% or something like that, you're probably gonna notice it, but also you're gonna say, I don't really want that to be the case. Maybe I'm gonna readjust these parameters and, and make some adjustments to make this look better and not zoom in so much. But 18% with this camera, this footage, it's gonna be fine. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop up to this area up here. And those different options are gonna do different things. If I click on one of these, it's gonna affect the clip a little bit differently, all these different options here. I'm gonna leave it on the subspace warp. And in order to get rid of this weird funky vibe right there, right there, yeah, funky. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my smoothness down. I'm gonna just pop it down to 25%, cut it in half. And I'm gonna to toggle on the stabilizer and toggle it off. So with it off, this is what our shot looks like. Got a lot of motion, a lot of body shake, camera shake. And with it on, it looks pretty good. You know, there's a little bit of wonkiness, but you gotta kind of find a balance at what level you're comfortable with. And the higher you go on the smoothness, the more it's going to try to remove all of the camera movement, okay? So you can really blast this thing up and it's really gonna try to make it look almost like you're using a tripod or something like that. I mean, we're actually moving the camera here, but it also increases the amount of zoom you have sometimes. So you wanna be really careful about this and you wanna to try to find that happy medium between too much and too little so it's not even doing anything. And so now I'm gonna show you guys one more trick that I really didn't know about until recently. With this warp stabilizer, you can kind of, you can analyze it like maximum, maximum anim, analyzing. You can maximize the analyzing of the clip that Anyways, you can maximize how you analyze this clip, which is super cool. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to advanced, click that box, boom, 
and it's gonna reanalyze the background and it's just gonna look even deeper inside of your footage for all these points at which it's gonna stabilize. So you're probably gonna get better results. It takes a little bit more computing power, so you gotta consider that. But if you're not getting the results you want, definitely pop that on, give it a try and see how it works. So that's it, you know, it's it's a fantastic tool to make your footage look smoother. It's not the perfect tool. A lot of times I use it and I'm disappointed in it, but I also do find myself using it and being super stoked on it frequently. So as you use this tool, you, I hope that you have a better understanding of how it works. And I think that's really important to how you use it. So hopefully that was really helpful. And if you did find it helpful, give that thumbs up a clickety clackety. And if you aren't yet subscribed, please subscribe below, turn on those notifications, and I'll see all of your lovely faces uh, next week. Peace. He's got his little chew right there. And it, and you probably hear it in the background. Go ahead, take it. Take it, yeah. We're going to do a detailed analysis of the clip. <laughs>